This week on Dream Rides, we join a standing room only crowd in Henderson, North Carolina, where we'll feast our eyes on a rare Fiat, get the royal treatment with a bad Bugatti, and be dazzled by a lead sled called Maybelline. All that and more coming at you. Welcome to Dream Rides. This week we are in Henderson, North Carolina, where there are some amazing cars lined up down here on Main Street. But there's only one coach here, and it's a Bugatti. And Ed, you brought this car here. Tell us a little bit about this beauty. What it is, it's a 1931 Bugatti Royale that me and a friend of mine hand built the whole car, uh, you know, to uh, pay a tribute to the uh, original Bugatti Royale. Handcrafted the car. Handcrafted inch by inch. You had to mock this all up with wood, basically. Yeah, we we originally did the we did the same way you do it with a boat. We did the stringers out of wood, and then we uh, put foam over top of that, and then carbon fibered it on the outside. Pulled the stringers out of the inside, carbon fibered the inside, and then just kept on going from there. What's under the hood is a uh, is a pretty much rare. GMC V12, they made 30 some hundred of the motors, produces 702 cubic inches, 450 horsepower, and 750 foot pounds of torque. That is a lot, and it takes a lot of wheels under the car for that much power, and these are massive 24s, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're 24 inch rims and stuff, 36 inch tall tires. Wow. But pretty much almost exactly the same as the original car. I tried to emulate the original car to give everybody an opportunity to see what at one time the original Bugatti Royale looked like. This is a great example of Coachworks at its finest. We're going to take a whirlwind tour of some of the amazing cars here in Henderson, and then I'm going to bring you back and I'm going to show you a little piece of Italian engineering. When you're around drag racing fans, and you mention classic Fiat Topolinos, immediately they think about altered drag racing cars. But I'm here with one that's actually a, a street rat, right, Tom? You bet. Tell me more about this, because you're a Fiat fan. Well, I've always been a drag race fan, and Fiats have always been uh, in the competition coupe dragster frames, and this one is the only one I've ever seen with a totally stock all steel Fiat Topolino body. Uh, it's not lengthened, it's not butchered, it's a totally stock body, but everything else is handmade. It was on eBay and it hadn't sold. And I thought, man, that's neat. I found the guy's phone number, I called him, we spoke five or six times. Great guy in Olympia, Washington. I made him an offer and he took it. So, uh, I bought the car, had it shipped from Washington to Ohio. And I understand also the previous owner and builder, he came out to walk you through the car. He Tell me what he showed you on this. He flew out to my house on his own nickel after I bought the car, and we put it up on jack stands. And it's got a high torque starter, Ford 9 inch rear, Coney coilover, rear shocks, uh, Ford drum brakes in the back. Chevy S10 disc brakes in the front, on and on. It's a 350 Chevy ZZ3 crate motor with aluminum heads, roller cam, turbo hydro, three speed. Before you brought it here as a street rod, this thing actually raced, didn't it? Oh yeah, he, he drag raced it. He stopped racing it when it did, did a big wheel stand and broke the front end. <laughs> so at that point, he made it exclusively a street rod. He took it down to the bare frame, totally rebuilt it, and sold it. So when I got it, it virtually had zero miles on it. And now it's street legal. It's street legal. It's I drive it. 2,000 miles so far this summer. And what kind of reactions do you get from people? Uh, people love it. They, they don't know what it is. What do they think it is? Volkswagen. 90% of the people think it's a modified Volkswagen. That's a shame. Yeah. That's well, the, the drag racers know. They know what it is. Coming up, 
we've got more amazing machines, including a pair of ultra rare lead sleds and a tricky Triumph taxi. We'll be right back with more Dream Rides. This edition of Dream Rides, presented by Steel Rubber, is being brought to you by Aeromotive. We know it, we race it, we live it. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Welcome back to Dream Rides as we go hunting for hot rods big and small on the streets of Henderson, North Carolina. As I promised you earlier in the show, we went from a little street rod now to a big street rod. In fact, a lead sled. Now, Tony, you built this Pontiac and it's gorgeous. Thank you. Why? I, I, I love this look. I love this since I was a kid. The, the word lead sled has uh, is applied to uh, the body modification, right. it's, a, it's a body filler. And for instance, this, this corner has an awful lot of filler in it to get the shape. It's completely okay. different than the original uh, 40 Pontiac. It started as a coupe. That's the only way I could get the shape I wanted. And um, so we, we took the roof off, we made the top, and also leaned the windshield back. I always liked the, the windshield angle of a 41 Cadillac. Beautiful. So I copied that angle. I found. We found the doors that would match the a, a pillar angle so I could have an operating vent window. I think they look better and it's just a nice thing to have. When people chop these things, they, uh, they eliminate the window because it's so hard to deal with it. But I wanted to do it and we got it to go. And you did a lot of custom body work on this. I mean, we're standing back here at the back of the car and, and this is not the stock bumper and, and it didn't come with those covers on the wheels either. No. We tried to uh, maintain the original line, just extend it. We extended it back and down. The original bumper came out about here, and the fenders rolled under. So there was a lot of work with sheet metal and body filler all, all throughout this to change the look. Being a former drag racer, which you are, uh, I know there's something big under the hood. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about it. Well, I wanted to keep the car all Pontiac. I got a 455 engine and, and a turbo 400 transmission. And I on a 1958 Pontiac fuel injection, which was a, a very rare very option. Very rare. Very rare option. And, and I adapted it to the 455 heads. Now it's, that's the, the, the main outside feature, but internally, yeah. uh, I changed the heads to the 400 cubic inch Pontiac head to raise the compression. It's 10 to 1, has a comp cams, hydraulic rotor cam, and a rocker arms. At less than 5,000 RPM, it makes 500 horsepower and 500 foot pounds of torque. And it's a perfect sound in the background right now. We're talking yeah. about that. And that's a beautiful sound. That sound that interrupted us was the annual revving contest, held as part of the East Coast Drag Racing Hall of Fame ceremonies. But as the engines died down, it was time for a look at another classic. You know it's a good day at a car show when you find one lead sled, but I found a second one, and a very traditional one that has all the ED cover. And when I say ED, I mean it's channeled, it's chopped, it's sectioned, it's shaved, and Kent, you built this beauty. Tell me about it. It was just a 52 uh, Chevrolet when we got it. It was uh, just a hole, and uh, we wanted to do some traditional, traditional hot rod. So we uh, just started with it, man, and it just kind of, you know, name of the car is Maybelline, and it kind of spoke to us as we were building it. It kind of told me as I was working on it, kind of what it wanted. So I kind of done what it told me to do. And what did Maybelline tell you to do? To well, she, she wanted me to tell. <laughs> she, she wanted me to uh, chop it. Obviously, we done a chop. We started and we got like a three and a half inch chop up here. Then we tape it as we go back. We got like a four and a half at the back. 
We had to drop the packing tray down when we done all of that, and then that made our made it like a taper. So then when we done that, it didn't look right. She didn't look right. She wanted me to give her more ass in. <laughs> More you tail in, more, ta more tail in. So what we did, we went in and we sectioned it. Then that gave it a bigger back, you know, bigger back in. Well, Ken, one thing I can tell about you is you are passionate about what you do. Yes, sir. And, and that's awesome. What, why did you want to pay homage and tribute to the, the masters right. of the past? Well, they're the guys when I was coming up. They're the guys that I looked up to, like Bill, Gene. All them guys, they're the guys that I looked at in the magazines, and they're the guys that were doing the cool stuff. And I just like the, you know, the, the design of the old guys, the way the old guys did it, with the lead and everything. You said old guys, right? But I know that, and actually, I saw that this was autographed and approved. You said Bill and Gene. That's Bill Hines, Gene Winfield, yes, Jimmy sir. Shine, Brad Masterson, George Burris. All of them approved of it. They really, really liked, you know, they liked the car when we was building it. So when they, I knew yeah. they approved what's under the hood too, the first thing I noticed is there's three carbs under there. Yes, sir. I'm running a 348 with three deuces. Yes, sir. Offenhauser, then the Offenhauser started to try to stay traditional, running the Offenhauser valve covers. They are from 1958. When we got them, we got them in a box, and they was from 1958. My my bought them. My girlfriend bought them, and when we got them, they was from 1958. Had 1958 newspaper in the box. They were brand new. Had never been put on anybody. I'm sure something everybody asks you about. Yes, sir. The fine ladies on this car. Right. Well, her name is Maybelline, and we got one on the dash, and we got four on the hubcaps, and try to pay, like you said, pay homage to Maybelline. I wanted to know that's what the name of the car was and what it is. Hot riding and customizing is all about pushing the envelope, going where others only dream. And those attitudes were on display everywhere today, even with the often unloved AMC. Well, this Gremlin's been in the family for about 25 years. Both my sons, my brother, a good friend of mine all owned it. And my first new car was a 72 Gremlin. So I bought this one, got it back from my sons, fixed it up like it would have been back in the day of 72 with the white letter tires, Keystone mags, et cetera, et cetera. They made 9,700 of the Gremlin X H code car, which came with a V8. And you also could get these ordered with a, it was called a Gremlin Randall edition with a 401 engine in it. All the engines in AMC from the 290s all the way up to the 401s was much like Chevrolet. You could take the parts off, interchange them, come up with different cubic inch configurations. You could take a six cylinder, Bolt it up to it, you could take a 401, bolt it into it. A uh, six cylinder car, it did not matter with the AMC Gremlin because you know everything had the same bolt pattern. This is the AMC Big Bad Orange color. Uh, it was actually, the came with a, it was, it was a turquoise color. While it may not be everyone's cup of tea, the Gremlin certainly causes a reaction. When I rolled in, they said, there goes the neighborhood. But there's no cookie cars here. We stand out from the crowd, but people love it. Parked just next to the Gremlin is probably the most dangerous looking hot rod in this or any town. After years of going to car shows like this one, I know one thing is true about every car guy. They are competitive to the core. Now this guy, he has found himself a competitive edge. All you have to do is check out this amazing hot rod to see that he surely has the competition in his sight. And that sight, and that sight, and that sight. The caliber of competition here in Henderson just gets better and better. And when we come back, we're gonna hail a Hot Rod London taxi that was built by Triumph. Stay with us. Welcome back to Dream Rides from Henderson, North Carolina. Hot routing is as American as apple pie, and today we've seen a wide spectrum of styles from followers of all the major American brands. But we've also encountered some foreign flavors. You know, I've always said that hot routing was more about the attitude than the car, and I found a car to prove my point. I'm here with Tim Hunter, and this is actually a Triumph, isn't yes, it? Yes, Triumph. Very rarely seen. Very rarely. Very what year is this? This is 1953. 
53, it's a Mayflower. Mayflower, yeah. We call it the MFR now because it's been pro street. In England, these were used as, uh, as taxi cabs. Normally, they would have uh, another set of doors in the back for the people to get in and out of the car. So, but if you look at the structural drawings, they are, they are very tough. I mean, everything is, is double-walled steel. So the car's heavy, uh, but it's safe. That's what was important in England in the taxi cab business. And it's got that yellow, so yeah. it does kind of look like a taxi cab. But yeah, right. what jumps out though is this. What do you call this blue? Uh, I guess you would call it marbleized. You yeah. know, uh, you know, uh, home decorators love this. They see that <laughs> and they go, "Wow, you know, I got to put that in my living room." So, uh, but basically, you know, you you paint the car. The paint is very wet. You take saran wrap or a trash bag, and then as a, and you roll it off. Now, that's generally the idea of how it's done. It's an art. It really is an art. It, so. it is an art, and, and I see you've got these beautiful center lines on here. How yes. big are the center lines on the back? Uh, let's see. Those are 16 wide in the back. Wow. So you got to have plenty of meat to be able to get off the line. So that'll do it. And well, you got to have the look. Well, I am so glad you brought this because it Thank just you. proves my point. Yes. Hot rodding is about attitude, not the car. Absolutely. For our next dose of hot rodding attitude, we turn to a diehard bow tie believer and a Camaro that is a work in progress, spanning three decades. This was my first ever car that I bought and paid for. Uh, I've owned it for 35 years. I've taken it from just a standard Camaro to a nice Camaro to the Pro Street look. And I work on it every weekend and love it. Just never will get rid of it. That's a 383 stroker. It's a 12 to one motor. Uh, it's putting out about 750 to 800 horsepower, and I've done all the work myself. Each time I've painted it, I've, I've stepped it up a little bit. Now we've come to the marble paint job. What they do is they put the base coat on, which is the black, come back with the top coat, lay saran wrap over it. And he does his magic with the saran wrap, then the saran wrap's pulled off, and then you start wet sanding and you start putting your clear on it. With its constant evolution, you can't help but wonder, what's next for this Camaro? Who knows? I'll get it home this weekend to think about something else for the next show. But I'm, I'm steady working on it. It's always something. People say you've got it to the point where I don't see what else you can do, but believe me, there's always plenty. We've still got more Dream Rides on tap, including a visit to a galaxy of Ford Starliners where we'll explore just what makes these fastbacks so fantastic. This edition of Dream Rides, presented by Steel Rubber, is being brought to you by Precision Turbo, a leader in turbocharger technology for street and race applications. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GMA body parts and accessories. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Welcome back to Dream Rides. Over in the Starliner Corral are a dozen of Ford's futuristic fastbacks. One of the coolest things we found here is an entire fleet of very rare Fords. These are Starliners, very iconic cars, very cool cars. And Larry, you have one of the coolest ones here because it's unique, isn't it? It has a 427 Ford uh, single overhead cam. They call them a camera yep. or sock engine. It was produced in, in 65 to combat the Hemi Plymouth when they came out and NASCAR would not let them run it. So uh, it was an engine that never made it in a production car. They put it on the drag strip and it got, got several awards, you know, through the drag strip. This is a true labor of love. This is what we call a rotisserie restoration, isn't yeah. it? When I bought it, it was still disassembled. And when I went to pick it up, it, it didn't have any seats in it and had all the bumpers and boxes and stuff. It was a well, you know, it was a box car I bought, really. <laughs> and uh, we just took the body, the car completely apart, pulled the body off and put it on a rotisserie. Yep. Took the frame completely apart, had it sandblasted. Then they took it and painted it with three coats of something called slick sand, which takes all the imperfections out. The running gear is just as nice as this fender right here. Then we went and picked it all up, 
put the body on, it had about six guys, and we just lifted the body up and set it back on the frame. And uh, by that time, the guy had my engine ready in Tennessee. So we took it up there, and he put the engine in it for us. And, and, and this is a great example of what a true car guy does for his dream ride. Yes. I mean, it's, it doesn't happen overnight. You no. piece this together parts over time, don't yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Uh, this was not a professional restoration shop. Well, I mean, it sure looks like it. It does. It really does. The paint is done by a guy, if, if you saw his shop, you would laugh. I mean, he lives right off the Blue Ridge Parkway in Virginia, down in the mountains and everything. But he does tremendous paint work and takes pride in what he does. And I told him I had a special engine to go in this, and you got to give me a special job here now. And th then my friend that owns the 60 over here, he's just a fanatic in anything he does. He's not a does this for a living or nothing. But he assembled the whole car, all the running gear. He put all the fenders on and that, well, everything. Every, put the seat, seats back in it, fixed the dash. And, so it's been done by just human beings like us, you know, that Regular are good at what they do. Like yeah, right, right. And, uh, and that's what we do is we get our friends to help us build right. our dream car. And, and, and would you say this is your dream? Oh, yeah, definitely. In addition to the single overhead cam 427, Ford also had other successful engines of that size. One was even shoehorned into an unlikely place. Back in the 60s, Ford stuffed a 427 cubic inch engine into these Cobras, and man, they would put out some crazy horsepower. But you know what? If you ask my friends and the people who know me, unfortunately, they're going to tell you that that's a little bit more my speed. Our final hot rod in this edition of Dream Rides is exactly that, a 1939 Chevy sedan that fulfilled the fantasy of its current owner. I've only owned it for four months. It's just a unique car the way it was put together. It started on September the 28th in 99, and the original builder took, he went till 2004 before the car was ever finished. This is an all steel car. The roof has been chopped four inches. I mean, when you chop a car, you just, it, it's, it takes months and months of work to try to put that car back together so that everything, all the lines and everything fit back and all the, the door, when the doors close, everything closes like it's supposed to. This is Chevrolet Torch Red. It's really got a unique pinstriping that was done by a gentleman down in Georgia. It's, it really sets the car off with not having any trim, roll, uh, chrome, or anything like that on it. It's got a 383 stroker Chevrolet motor in it. The interior is, is a custom all leather interior that, uh, and that was one of the main things, that, one of the things that drew me to this car. I seen this come online on uh, racejunk.com and I said, I told my wife when I seen it, I gotta have it. Here's a last look at the gotta have it cars from today's show. Well, that wraps up another episode of Dream Rides here in Henderson, North Carolina, where we met some amazing people, got to hear the stories behind their cars. And that's why we do Dream Rides, because for every car we show you, there's a great story behind it. So join us for future episodes where we tell the stories behind the cars. Next week, we'll visit with car collector extraordinaire Don Miller whose passion for hot rods and racing has helped him compile an eclectic assortment of machines. Be sure to join us then on Dream Rides.